देखिए मोदी सरकार जब से बनी है और समाज के सभी तबकों का ध्यान रख करके बजट लाती है और निश्चित तौर से भी कुछ घंटे बाकी हैं आप देखेंगे कि समाज के सभी वर्गों का उम्मीदों वाला बजट है प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व और हमारे वित्त मंत्री जी के देखरेख में जो हम लोगों ने देश के साथ काम किया है उसका परिणाम है कि इकोनॉमिक सर्वे भी आप देखें तो कहीं ना कहीं भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था अपने पट्टी पर है आज हमारे देश का अर्थसंकल्प फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर श्रीमती निर्मला सीतारामन जी लोकसभा में ग्यारह बजे प्रस्ताव करेंगे उसके पहले मैडम के नेतृत्व में हमारे सहयोगी पंकज जी चौधरी सेक्रेटरी माननीय राष्ट्रपति जी को नौ बजे मिलने वाले हैं उसके बाद दस बजे प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी के अध्यक्षता में कैबिनेट की मीटिंग हो रही है उसी में हमें बुलाया है Okay, I want to welcome to our coverage now Dr. Subhash Chandra Garg again, someone who's worked very hard for many years in putting many budgets together. He actually came into our studio with a leather briefcase and I thought, oh, here he is, uh, all set, maybe heading towards parliament as part of the team that delivers the budget. From the economic survey, and since you've been so closely involved for so many years, Dr. Gargan, making actual no, budgets, no, no. give our viewers a sense of what they should be expecting when the finance minister starts speaking at 11. What have you picked up? Let's see what you can decode. See, the budget is all about uh, the government's estimates of expenditures in the revenues and the deficit. That's primarily the objective of the budget. Uh, but over the years, the budget has also got into enormous economic policy making and all. So we uh, look forward to two things, uh, uh, basically, in the budget. Number one, what is the government's balance sheet? expenditures, receipts and the deficits and what are the economic policy uh, measures which the government is going to announce. The setting for the year, if you look at uh, today, uh, is that the uh, government finances are in a bit of a difficult situation. Uh, the tax revenues have started tapering off despite what we received yesterday uh, in the form of GST. Um, the overall growth uh, is tapering off. Corporate profits you have seen also um, are now coming under pressure. So you have a situation where revenues might be under a bit of a pressure for the next year. Whereas expenditure commitments have been uh, quite uh, sharply going up, whether it's fertilizer subsidies or on the food side and uh, expenditure on capital ex side, etc. So I see, uh, number one, uh, what the, uh, the finance minister is going to do about balancing the expenditures and uh, the, the revenues and what kind of fiscal deficit it is. No, but I want to spend some time talking about this because one of the things that I picked up, we did a big uh, business today market summit just uh, last week in Mumbai and everyone seemed to be saying the government should double down on investing in building public infrastructure. And when I speak to officials in the government ministers, they're saying we want private investment to step up to the plate and for India Inc. to start investing. And the government at the highest level, Shankar, whether it's the Prime Minister or the Finance Minister, have been publicly and privately nudging, dhakka lagawaing private uh, companies to start investing more aggressively despite the sharp reduction in corporate taxation, despite the fact that capacity utilization is in the mid-70s, that investment cycle hasn't kicked off and you've got the government tearing its hair apart saying, why is every, everybody depending on public infra, uh, spending? Why can't India Inc. step up and do more? Well, both of them have a case. If you recall, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman spoke about, spoke to uh, the Chambers of Commerce and said, what more do you need to Correct. know your own strength at one level? But the reality in the economy is that consumption isn't quite picked up to the pre-pandemic level. It is still uh, moving it's at a glacial pace. And unless consumption picks up, capacity utilization will not improve. And unless capacity utilization increases, private sector will not come in. But a big issue in this, uh, uh, Rahul, is the sentiment. And the global sentiment has really clouded even those who sort of thought of moving a little further. So the private sector expects the gov uh, government to spend more so that there are more jobs and more income and more consumption and to push that. And this is going to be a tough call 
particularly in this year? No, because it's been said for so long, Dr. Lahiri, that India is poised for a multi-year investment cycle, the plane is on the runway, ready for investment takeoff, and somehow that takeoff hasn't happened. And there have been genuine reasons. The pandemic, for one, uh, a global recession, the specter of war, trade tensions between China and the United States, there have been real factors. But everyone's been saying, Apna time kabaga. when does this plane really take off? No, Rahul, just to sort of con continue with your metaphor of the aviation thing, visibility has been poor. <laughs> and so the private sector is worried that they might crash land. Sorry. Yeah, Rahul, it's a question that is very dear to my heart. See, so the secret to Chinese high growth and Chinese success is the high savings and investment ratio. I'm looking at numbers, so I'll look at my computer. China has invested much more than 30% of their GDP every year since 1992. Public investment or private investment? Total investment. Total investment. Okay. While we managed to increase our investment beyond 30% of GDP only from around 2004-05. Now, the good news that I find is that while China is trying to reduce its investment GDP ratio, they think they're over-investing, we have managed to never invest more than 35% of GDP and now it is going up slightly. But you can't say <coughs> both the things. You can't say we're consuming too little and saving too little. Either consumption is too much or savings is too much. Both cannot be too much at the same time as a proportion of GDP. So I think it's very important to step up the investment but then again, when you ask the question, why aren't people investing? There's a very good thing that Rosenstein Rodin, one of the famous economists, said, that why did people open uh, cotton mills in Manchester when they could have opened in Mumbai? The reason is we don't have the roads, we don't have the port, we don't have the infrastructure. I think infrastructure is the key why investment is not taking place. Even supply chain, if you want to be part of the global supply chain, you must provide infrastructure which is close no, but to... Dr. Gatt, the government, to be fair to it, has worked as hard as is conceivably possible in the Indian context in trying to build that public infrastructure, which facilitates exactly what Dr. Lairi is saying, building the public infrastructure to be able to facilitate investment. So if I uh, can join this debate, which is very important, you see, essentially in the industrial economy, the investment is in three things. One is you build uh, manufacturing, factories, etc. You, second, you build... Uh, infrastructure and third you build services on that right so take for example infrastructure of transportation so railways roads etc and then somebody comes up with rails or buses or other services so that <coughs> investment um, in India uh, in infrastructure has been primarily in the public sector that public sector investment the government is stepping up that public, uh, the infrastructure investment in private sector has not picked up very massively, despite what we see uh, large forays by uh, groups like Adani, etc., into, um, into the infrastructure space. There, there is a lot of policy problems, there is a lot of returns problem. And therefore, private investment in that space is not going to be very attractive. Manufacturing, where the demand and supply situation is primarily the factor, and where you mentioned that rightly that manufacturing factory capacities are still not utilized beyond 75-76%. So why do you make investment in manufacturing, which is private sector by the way, most of that. There is, no, oh, there is very little public sector investment in the manufacturing space. Um, and there, since the absence of demand is there, and you don't uh, get into. More investment now is coming into the new economy, the digital economy, the semiconductors, the applications, the networks, etc., where the investment is coming in the private sector.